Well, we're going to uh, come to the message now. So it's all listening ears. And uh, this is about the walls of Jericho. Now, Joshua, not our Joshua at the back, but Joshua uh, followed Moses as the leader of Israel. And uh, Moses had rescued the Israelites from slavery to the Egyptians. And he had brought them through the wilderness and it could have taken them three months. But it took them 40 years to go through the wilderness. And God provided them all the food that they needed, all of the clothing that they needed, all the protection all the water, everything they needed. But it was to Joshua who was to go forward and lead uh, the people into the promised land. And that was the task. He says, go and conquer, now listen to this, the wicked land of Canaan. Now, because we've got very young children, I can't tell you all of the things that the Canaanites did in the worship of idols but it was horrific and we would see that they deserved to be put out of the land for their wickedness and God had promised that land to the descendants of Abraham the Israelites and so that was the, the, the task now the first city that they came against was a place called Jericho in fact, I believe that you can go to Jericho today and you can see the palm trees and it's a, a beautiful city. I've never been myself, but I've seen some photographs. And at that time, there was a great fortress or walls that went all around the city. And they were so high that no man could climb up them. No ladder was long enough to climb those walls. And so this was a fortified city. The great test that God puts them was the hardest city of all. And the reason is because if you can conquer here, all of Canaan is just a matter of time. So they're going to see the, the greatest task. So Joshua, now he knew that Israel was too weak to conquer such a place. They didn't have battering rams. They didn't have great swords made of the finest steel. They didn't even have those who were trained in archery. They were just ordinary people. And um, they were certainly not no match to the great army of Israel. Jericho and its great fortress. So what does Joshua do? Well, he hears something from God because God gave him the task, but he also gave him the promise as well. He said, I will be with you. The God that we've just been singing about, who made the, the stars and the mountains and this vast universe, he is on their side. And that was the great confidence that they could have. Now these people here are the people of Jericho. And they were proud and defiant and were certainly not going to yield the city to Joshua and his army. Roy, can you get the front door please? All right, okay, thank you. So the people of Jericho were proud and defiant. They certainly were not going to yield the city. And they were not about to surrender to the Lord, who was with the armies of the Israelites. Well, I've bring one point of application here because the reason we're learning the story is to learn a little bit about ourselves as well and we are pictured in this narrative this historical record we 
are a lot like the people of Jericho. We are proud and defiant. Sometimes we call that unbelief. Rather than have faith and trust and love for God, rather than loving God with all our heart, soul and mind and strength, we are resistant. And we say we will not worship him and we are strong enough to withstand him. We are proud and defiant. We will not repent or surrender ourselves to God and, and ask him to be our saviour. And in our rebellion, here is the parallel, in our rebellion we build up great walls of unbelief. Okay? We're not going to surrender to God. Great walls of unbelief. But these must come down if we are to be saved. So your unbelief, your defiance, your rebellion, your saying, I won't go God's way, we must repent of those things if we are to be saved. It, in fact, it would be, it would take, you would say, a miracle to bring those walls down. And we would say, that's absolutely right. Hello, welcome, come in. It's nice to have you. Becky, can you just help them find a seat? <coughs> well... Welcome for those who have joined us. We, we've, we haven't started very long. We've sung a couple of songs. And uh, we're, we're learning about a man called Joshua. And uh, Joshua was the mighty leader of the Israelites. And God had said to them to go to the city of Jericho and conquer it. And yet it was a high fortified walls all around. And so we're saying it would take a miracle to bring those walls down and the people of Jericho did not believe in miracles and it's many people in this world don't believe in miracles either they trusted instead in those high fortified walls that's what they trusted in we've got a great city no army can conquer us and so they trusted in what they had built rather than in the Lord they had bows and arrows to shoot from the top of the wall and they had swords and shields and no doubt many other things as well they were a well-equipped army and so when they heard that Israel had crossed the Jordan they locked the doors and doubled the guard. They were not going to be defeated. So Joshua speaks to his army. He says, do not be afraid of them, Joshua would say. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord will be with us and give us the victory. Okay, they could see the army, they could see the walls, but they must see the invisible God who is on their side, and he will give us the victory. I imagine that some people would have said, but we are no match for the people of Jericho. How can we conquer such a fortified city? Well, Joshua knew the battle would be impossible with their own resources. And so he prayed to God that he would help them in this matter. And then something amazing happened. The Lord appeared to Joshua in a vision. And Joshua saw in that vision a man shining as bright as the sun and he had a sword in his hand. We believe, as Christians, 
that this was the Lord Jesus Christ who appeared to Joshua. It was the Lord Jesus as the Son of God. You see, Jesus lived long before he was born. He was the one before time and space was there. And he created it all. And here he is appearing before um, Joshua. He says, do not be afraid. This is what you must do. And the Lord told Joshua exactly what he must do. We're going to find out in a minute. Joshua listened carefully and he said, we will do as you command. The obedience of faith. So Joshua told the Israelites what they must do. Have faith in God. He will be with us if we trust in him. The Israelites could hardly believe their ears. But they said, we will do all that the Lord commands. That's faith. Obedience of faith. So Joshua trusted that God would promise, uh, that what God promised he would do. And likewise, here is something for us. We must trust that God is faithful and true. The God of Joshua, the God of Moses, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is faithful to us. He makes promises to you and I for us to trust him. So the next day, Joshua said, let us march. Let the priests go first. Do you remember how many priests were to go? Were you listening? Cain? Four? Nope. Seven. Seven. Well done. Good. Mum was listening. Seven priests were to go. And what did they carry in their hands? <laughs> no. What did he carry in their hands? Yeah. No, not the Bible. Some, some. Yes. Spears. Not spears. Seven trumpets. Well done. Okay. Let the pe priests go first, and then all the people follow after. So, the alarm bells were raised in Jericho. Battle stations, everyone. And everyone, they were confident of a mighty victory. This is a day we will shoot our arrows, we will destroy the armies of Israel. And everyone ran to the top of the wall and took their positions. Here they would defeat these worshippers of God. But... What were the Israelites doing? They weren't forming an attack, they were marching. They weren't attacking, they were marching around. And that's what they did. And in front of them, weren't a mighty man with a big spear and a shield, but the priests who blew their trumpets made from ram's horns. Next, we're told, as if we were to read on, the Ark of the Covenant was brought. Now you can see them carrying it here. It was like a great wooden chest that was covered in gold and inside were the Ten Commandments. And this was a symbol for the people of God's presence. I will be with you. In fact, that Ark of the Covenant was placed in the temple behind a big curtain, or the tabernacle, behind a big curtain. And that's where God's presence was. So God was with them. And then followed all the Israelites. And there were a lot of them, a lot of Israelites. And they all marched round. And they kept completely silent as God had instructed the people of Jericho, they could not understand what was going on. And they began to laugh 
at the Israelites. You can imagine it, can't you? Well, it's true that the world laughs also at the Christian and the Bible today. Why do they worship God, people would say. Why do they believe in the Bible? They mock today. But having marched in silence, the Israelites returned to their camp. So what was the purpose of their marching? Why did they march around? Why didn't they take their swords out and attack? Well, first, to have faith, we must trust and obey God. Second, and I believe this, they could see just how high those walls were. Because maybe from a distance it didn't seem so big. But when you're standing in front of those walls and they seem so high, then they could really see how difficult a task it was. Um, and so too, um, for us, we must think that our sins aren't so bad. Remember what the walls were speaking of? Speaks of our unbelief and our proud defiance. We think that's not so bad. Okay? But when we see it close up, when God shows us how proud we really are, then we can see something. We, we can really see up close when God shows us. So let's get back to the narrative. The next day, Joshua said, let's march again. Some thought, perhaps today we will fight. And once again, the priests blew their horns. And once again, the Israelites followed in silence. The people of Jericho watched them march. What is all this marching achieving? Give up. You see the proud defiance? Why all the marching? Give it up. But once again, they went back to their camp. What would they do tomorrow? Well, the third day, they did exactly the same as before. And the fourth day, and the fifth day, and those with a little faith began to doubt. All that we're doing is marching. And every time we go round, those walls are just as high and strong. And those who didn't really believe in God began to drop out. Your God is worthless, they would shout from the walls. Joshua is hopeless. Give up this nonsense. There is no God. That's the kind of thing this world says today. But those who believed began to pray to God. Lord, they said, bring down these proud walls. Well, the evening arrived before the day of victory. How would victory be secured? Not by battering rams or catapults, not by political peace treaties, but those walls must come down. Our believing, stubborn pride must be humbled. The final day. Today we will march seven times around. Not once, seven times. And then I will give you the sign. And so they marched seven times. And then the priests blew their ram's horns. And just what God had said, as we read in his word, victory belongs not to the mighty, but to the Lord. Now everyone shout as loud as you can. 
And all the Israelites shouted. And the police, priests blew their horns and the walls came crashing down. This was surely God's power at work. Well, I put to you just one further point of application. Gospel preachers are like those trumpets. And we have to say, salvation belongs to the Lord. And I would say to you, as a preacher of the gospel, that you, children, parents, you must look to the Lord and trust in him if you are to be saved. And so unbelief must come crashing down. The proud are humbled and rebellion ceases. That's what it means to be a Christian. You stop running, defying God, but you believe in him and trust in his son who has come into this world to be our saviour. The Israelites ran into the city to claim victory, but everyone knew that it was the Lord who had conquered. Jericho was the first city to fall in Canaan. Eventually, the whole land would be conquered. These are historical facts. These aren't stories. These are true accounts that God has recorded for us. The Lord had driven out those wicked Canaanites and Israel possessed the land God had promised. And there is one last part of application. God promises everyone who believes on his son the land of heaven, the promised land of heaven. So are you proud and unbelieving? Are you like the people of Jericho? Or are you a humble believer and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour? Well, here is just one verse from the New Testament. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Well, boys and girls, mums and dads, you've been listening very well. Let's just pray uh, to God now.